Hey friends, welcome back to Homestead on a Prayer. Today we are going to be going on another sourdough adventure together, and I'm going to be introducing you to one of my absolute favorite things to make with sourdough, which up until probably about two years ago or so, I had never even heard of, and that is a bialy. Now, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, but it's kind of hard to describe. It's sort of like a roll, sort of like a bagel, and really what makes it is it has this delicious onion poppy seed filling. So probably about two years ago, I discovered this baking blog or baking website, and I was looking for more sourdough recipe ideas. And the lady that runs that website is a pastry chef, and she has all these amazing recipes on the website. I'm gonna go ahead and link the website below so that you can find this recipe and her other recipes if you're interested. Anyway, she introduced me to something called a bialy, which I had never heard of, as I said, but it looked delicious, and so I just decided that I had to give it a try. So today, I'm going to introduce you guys to that. Maybe if you're a little more sophisticated than me, I think some better cities tend to offer more diverse foods, and so if you live in a, a big city, you might have a local bakery that serves something like that, but in my area, those are not really well known, so I just decided to try them after finding them on her website, and I really love them. So let's come on over to my stand mixer and we're gonna get started. So for this recipe, you're going to start with one cup of sourdough starter. You do want this to be an active sourdough starter, not discard. So your sourdough starter will be active when you fed it recently. We do some discard recipes on this channel too, and those are a great way to use up kind of the extra sourdough starter that builds up when you just feed your sourdough. You Sometimes you have some extra that you kind of have to get rid of so your sourdough starter doesn't grow out of control. This is not the case with this recipe. You're going to want active, freshly fed sourdough starter. So I fed mine this morning about four or five hours ago, so it should be ready to work with for this recipe. So we're gonna start by measuring out about a cup of the sourdough starter and adding it to our stand mixer. So next you're going to need one and a quarter cups of warm water now, I'm not really picky with the temperature. I just make sure that it's about room temperature, probably slightly warmer than room temperature, but I tend to err on the side of too cool rather than too hot because I don't want to kill my sourdough. So we've got one and a quarter cups of slightly warmer than room temperature water. Let's go ahead and add that into our mixer. Next, we're going to need two cups of bread flour. Now, I imagine you could probably use all-purpose flour for this recipe, and I think that would probably come out perfectly fine too. The recipe calls for bread flour, so that's what I use because I tend to have both on hand. It's a little bit higher of a protein content than regular all-purpose flour. It's going to lead to a product that's a little bit, it's gonna give you a little bit of a better rise, a little bit of a chewier texture. So it's good for this recipe, but if you only have all-purpose, go ahead and use that, that'll be fine too. So we're going to add two cups of bread flour into our sand mixer. Now the two cups that we're adding now is not the full amount of bread flour that we're going to need in this recipe. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to incorporate some of the flour, the water, and the sourdough starter together, and we're going to let that sit for about half an hour. That just allows the liquid to really absorb the flour and makes it less sticky to work with. So I have a half cup measure here, so we're going to need to add four of these in here. So here is the final one. So we're gonna go ahead and give this a mix just to make sure it's incorporated. Then we're going to cover it and let it sit for about half an hour before we add the rest of our ingredients. So now that it's all mixed up, I'm just gonna go ahead and cover it with a clean kitchen towel and we're just going to let it sit. I'll meet you back here in half an hour and we'll continue on. So our dough's been sitting for about half an hour. We're going to uncover it. It should have soaked up the flour, or the flour should have soaked up the liquid nicely. So now we're going to add our next couple ingredients. So now we're going to add two teaspoons of just regular granulated sugar and two teaspoons of table salt. I'm using kosher salt, but you can use any, any table salt that you like. All right, so we're just gonna give this a quick mix to incorporate the sugar and salt. All right, so now that we've added our sugar and salt, we're going to go ahead and take off this paddle attachment and we're going to replace it with a dough hook. Then we're going to add the rest of our flour. So 
So our recipe calls for three and a half cups of bread flour. We already added two cups before, so we're going to go ahead and add the other cup and a half, and then we're going to mix it up with a dough hook, which is also going to start kneading at the same time. Now we're going to go ahead and start kneading this. We are going to knead it for a little while and what we're looking for is for the dough to clear the sides of the bowl. Basically it will stop, it'll kind of gather around the dough hook as a ball. It may still be a little bit sticky but it should generally gather. And if that isn't happening after a little bit then we might need to add just a touch more flour. But let's go ahead and mix this up and see what happens. Now little pro tip here, I recommend pulsing your stand mixer for the first few, for the first little bit of mixing, as opposed to just starting it and turning away like I just did. I don't know if you caught that, but I had a cloud of flour explode all over my countertop. So if you want to avoid doing what I did, then we're going to just gently pulse this a little bit until the flour is moistened, and then we can go ahead and turn it up. Okay, so you could really see here how the bread has kind of gathered around the dough hook and it's not, it's not kind of stuck all over the sides of the bowl anymore. It's really formed a cohesive ball. That is what we want, despite the fact that I lost a lot of flour in that explosion in my kitchen. It seems like we actually did have enough flour for that to happen. So now I'm just going to turn the speed up on this mixer a little bit. We're gonna let it knead for about five minutes or so and then I'll meet you back. All right, so our bread looks done kneading. So what we're going to do is coat this bowl with some olive oil cooking spray. You can transfer it into a separate bowl if that's easier. I like to have fewer dishes, so I keep it in the same bowl. Oh, I'm just gonna take my rings off so I don't get them all filled up with dough. So we're just gonna go ahead and take the dough out. We're going to spray the sides of the bowl and then we're going to let it rest for half an hour. Now it is going to be pretty sticky sourdough bread or sourdough dough, no matter what you're making with it, does tend to be a little, little on the sticky side. Although honestly, this is a little bit sticky, less sticky than usual. I wonder if it's less humidity in the air now that it's getting, getting colder and getting closer to winter. So let's go ahead and spread it like to kind of fold the ends on itself just to make it nice and round and smooth while it sits. So we're gonna put it down smooth side down, roll it around to get coated in the oil and then flip it over so that all the sides are coated with oil. So we're going to let our bread rest for about 30 minutes and then we're going to fold it all over on itself. I'll show you how to do that when we get to it. But while it's resting, we're going to go ahead and make the filling for the Bialis. We're going to make the filling now and then we'll just store it in the fridge so that, so that it'll be ready when it's time to bake them tomorrow. So we're going to start with an onion. The recipe actually calls for half a cup of onion. I only have really huge onions right now, so we're probably going to use about half of this. I usually use a little more than half a cup, so I usually use a smallish onion, but I use the whole thing, which is usually maybe two thirds, three quarters of a cup. This is going to be way more, so I'm probably going to use about half of it, and I'm going to chop and freeze the other half just so I have it prepped for Next time I need an onion. So while we chop our onion, in this pan over here, I'm going to, on low heat, get a couple tablespoons of butter melting. So this recipe calls for the filling to have about two tablespoons of butter. We're not going to be incredibly precise, but I think that's about two tablespoons there. So I'm just going to turn this on low, let it heat up and start melting. Really, I turned it on more like a medium low. I just meant like a, a low-ish temperature. We don't want it to burn while we chop our onion. So we'll set aside half of this just to use for other recipes. We'll go ahead and get this half chopped up for a recipe. Now you want to you want to kind of mince it pretty finely. We don't want it to be big chunks. We want it to be probably partway between a mince and a dice. And I am going to save the onion skins and ends to go in my broth bag for the next time that I make chicken bone broth, which will probably be pretty soon. I have a chicken that I think I'm going to roast up for dinner tonight. So tomorrow we'll probably make bone broth with it. All right, 
right, so we want to go ahead and add all of our onions into this butter here, along with half a teaspoon of salt. So we're basically just gonna go ahead and saute these onions until they're softened and kind of translucent till they seem almost done. We don't want them to be browned at all because they are going to be baked again once they're put into the roll. They'll, uh, they'll kind of brown up then, so we don't want them to get too brown. So for now, we just want them to mostly be softened and a little bit translucent. Once we're done cooking them, we're going to add in some poppy seeds and then you can season it with a little more salt to taste, a little pepper to taste. Then we're just going to go ahead and store that in the fridge and it'll be ready for us tomorrow. So when I have extra onions, I like to keep a bag or two like this. These are just pre-chopped yellow onions in my freezer. And then it makes meal prep so much easier. And especially like today for lunch, I was making a quesadilla and I wanted just a couple onions, nowhere near a whole onion. So I was able to just grab a small handful of onions out of here and throw them in. And it makes meal prep so much easier especially for times like that. So onions freeze really well. So if you've got extra, rather than sticking them in the fridge and potentially not getting to them before they go bad, storing them in the freezer is a great option. So we're just gonna go ahead and get the other half of our onion added into this bag and then it'll be ready when we need it. All right, so our onions have been sauteing for a few minutes. Once I got them added to the pan, I did go ahead and bump the heat up to about medium. You can see I did let them brown a little bit. So I didn't follow the recipe strictly. Ideally, I would have caught them a second sooner, but They'll still be good. So now we're going to add a tablespoon of poppy seeds into this filling. I have turned the heat off, by the way. So we'll add about a tablespoon of poppy seeds into these onions, get that mixed in. Then you want to add salt and pepper to taste. I'm going to add a little bit of pepper. I find that the salt that we added at the beginning is really enough. I don't like it to be too salty. So I don't think I've ever needed to add additional salt. So we're just gonna add a little bit of pepper. You can go ahead and give it a taste, and if you like your food a little bit saltier, go ahead and add some salt too. Completely personal preference. So there's our filling, and like I said, this is what makes the recipe. It's so good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let this cool a little bit. Once it comes down to about room temperature, I'm just going to store it in this jar, and we're going to leave it in the fridge till tomorrow. Our bialis won't be ready to actually bake until tomorrow and we'll add the filling at that time. Now, I don't think it's been quite half an hour yet, but I'm going to go back to our dough and I'm going to show you how to kind of stretch it and fold it on itself. You don't need to be really all that strict with the timing of this. So let's take a look at what our dough looks like now and I'll show you how to do it. So our dough has been resting for approximately half an hour. As I said, it's a little bit less. It's probably 20 minutes or so, but you don't need to be that precise. So what you're going to do is just lift your dough out. Then you're going to grab all the edges and kind of fold it on itself to make it just to make it nice and round again then we're going to put it down upside down basically all that really does is it kind of redistributes the yeast it just helps your dough to really ferment evenly so that the sourdough can get to all of that flour the other thing that it does is it kind of helps strengthen your dough it builds up that gluten a little bit more and just helps your dough to be able to have a little more structure so what we're going to do is we're going to cover this. We're going to let it sit for about 30 minutes. It's going to rest again. Then we're going to come back and do the exact same thing. We're just going to fold it over and let it rest again. Then in another 60 minutes after that, we're gonna come back and we're going to do it a third time. Then 60 minutes after that, we're going to come back and we're going to shape our bialis and get them in the fridge overnight. Now, I know that sounds like a lot and I know it sounds like kind of a strict schedule you have to keep but really don't be intimidated by it. Honestly, I've had times where I've missed a stretch and fold completely. I've had times when I've done fewer of them. I've had times when I really, I haven't even done any. I've also had times where I've done them all, but haven't really done them on the right schedule. The schedule is just a guideline and that is the ideal situation. If you're not able to do the ideal situation, that's fine. Just go ahead and you can even just let this sit for the full, I think it's like three hour fermentation time without touching it once then come back and shape your bialis and they'll still be fine. So don't feel like if you're not going to be, if you're not gonna be home all day and you're not going to be able to do your stretches and folds right at the right time, don't let that stop you from trying this recipe because it's still going to be really good whether you do it the ideal method or not. I am home for the afternoon, so I'm going to follow the guidelines, but again, 
don't let that intimidate you away from trying this recipe. So let's cover this up. We're going to fold it again in 30 minutes, in 60 minutes, and then we're going to shape it. So our Bialy dough has finished its room temperature ferment. Now it's time to take it out of its bowl here. We're going to cut it into 10 equal pieces and shape it. Then it's going to have a cold ferment overnight in the refrigerator. All right, so you can see how smooth and beautiful that dough looks. It's a really nice texture to work with now. So we're just gonna take this dough and turn it out onto the countertop. We're going to work with about half of it at a time. So I'm just going to cut it in half and put half of it back in the bowl. Now, if your dough is really sticky, you might want to flour your countertop. I think this is gonna do okay without my counter being floured. If it doesn't work, then we'll add some flour in a little bit. So this is half the dough here on my counter. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to do my best to shape this into five equal pieces. Now, you may not be exact unless you actually use a scale and weigh it but we're just going to do the best we can here. Okay, so that isn't perfectly even. Once you have your dough cut into portions, you're just going to kind of shape each one the way you'd shape a roll. I just like to take the edges and kind of fold them over to give a nice round shape. Then you're going to take this little, you're gonna kind of pinch all the edges together. See how we have this little nub here? We're going to put that nub down on the counter we're going to put the smooth end up and just kind of cup your hand and roll it over your hand. Once you have a nice roll shape formed, you're going to kind of stretch it out and flatten it a little bit to kind of make a disc shape. Now it's gonna be a little bit resistant to stretching at first. What we're going to do is put it on our cookie sheet here. So I have two cookie sheets that I've lined with these silicone baking mats. This one's larger, so we're going to put six on this one and we'll put four on the other. We're going to let them rest for a little bit. Once they've been resting for maybe 15, 20 minutes, something like that, the gluten should have relaxed a little bit, making them a little bit easier to shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them all shaped into like a rough disc shape and then we'll stretch them out a little bit more. So as I said, I didn't distribute the dough completely evenly. This one's a little bit smaller, I think, but we'll just do the best we can. They should all be delicious anyway. Then we're just going to Stretch it as much as we can into a disc shape. Then we'll just set it down with the other one. So again, I just kind of, see I cut them kind of triangular. So I'm just gonna take that point from the triangle, kind of take all the points in and then just go around the edges and kind of stretch it as you go and pull the edges into the middle till we have a nice round shape. Again, gather it right at the point and put that point down and you want to kind of roll it on the counter around that point. Then we're just going to stretch it out as much as we can. We don't want to pull too hard because we don't want to actually tear it. This will get a lot easier as it relaxes. So we have all 10 Bialy shaped. They've been sitting for maybe 15 minutes or so. I'm just going to take one that's been sitting for a little bit and we're going to try to stretch it out. Now you can see how much more easily it stretches out and it's really, it's a lot easier to get it to be quite a bit wider now. Now that it's been sitting for a little bit, it's relaxed. So we're just going to go through all the Bialy's, stretch them out a little bit. We want them to be, you know, maybe four inches wide or so, don't need to be exact. Then we're just going to cover them back up with this plastic wrap. They're going to stay in the refrigerator overnight and tomorrow morning we're going to bake them. So, yes, so much better. 
I don't have to pull on it hard. I don't have to worry about tearing it. Just kind of gently stretch it out till it forms a nice disc shape. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get the rest of the Bialy stretched out, get them in the refrigerator, and I will meet you back here in the morning. Good morning, friends, welcome back. So our Bialy sat in the refrigerator all night. I just pulled them out. They're going to now come up to room temperature and sit for a couple hours to get a little bit puffy. Before we do that though, we're going to just stretch them out a little bit more and just, you can see they held their shape pretty well in the fridge overnight, but we're just gonna stretch them out a little bit more and then we're gonna let them rise. So just gonna remove the plastic wrap. They will probably feel a little bit stiff just from being cold. So we're just gonna go ahead and gently, you don't wanna smush them down too much, but just gently stretch them out. So once I get all of these stretched out, I'm just going to replace the plastic wrap. I'm just going to let them sit for at least an hour, maybe up to two hours for them to just rise a little bit. I'll meet you back here once they've risen. So we've let the Bialis rise for about two hours. You can see that they're not, they're not really puffy, but they have kind of a, a lighter look than they did before. And they've, I wouldn't say they've doubled in size, but they have increased in size. So now comes the best part, which is adding the onion filling. Now I have two trays of Bialis here. I have this one that has six, and then I have my smaller cookie sheet. This one only has four. This one's going to be for my kids. They don't like the onion filling, even though it is the best part. I definitely recommend the onion filling, but they still make a tasty little roll, even if you don't use the filling. So we're going to go ahead and add the filling to these six Bialis here, and then we're going to pop these in the oven. So here's the filling that we made together yesterday. This sat in the fridge overnight. So it kind of, the butter solidified, it's pretty solid now. So what we're going to do, the recipe says to take about a teaspoon of filling and put it in the center of each one. I'm probably going to be a little more generous than a, than a teaspoon, especially since we have four that aren't going to take filling. So you're just going to kind of take your fingers, just make a dent in the center, and push it out to the side, and that will give you just a little well where you can put your filling. You just want to be careful not to deflate the rest of your Bialy while you do this. So you don't want to put any pressure on the outside edges. All right, so now that we made a nice dent in the center of all these, we're going to go ahead and fill that with about a teaspoon, probably a generous teaspoon of filling. So I like to use pretty much all the filling. We'll add a teaspoon and then we'll go back and add a little more. Now I'm kind of I'm filling up the center with this and I'm kind of pressing it into the center a little bit just to make sure that it really has good contact. Now I do like to serve these kind of like bagels. You can slice them in half and then top them with either butter or cream cheese. Either one is great. And what you can do if you have extra of this filling here, if you put the butter and cream cheese on your bagel, you can just kind of spoon the extra filling on top of the butter and cream cheese just to make it a little bit extra delicious. So if I have a little extra filling, I'll be saving it for that purpose. So now that we've got these all filled, you can see these are ready to go in the oven. So I have my oven preheated to 450 degrees. We're going to bake these for about 20 minutes is what the recipe calls for. So I'm gonna set my timer for about 15 minutes and check on them then. So I'll just show you guys. These are what the ones that we made without filling look like. So those will just kind of bake up like sort of a, a flat roll with a little bit of dome in the middle. So we're just going to bake these and I will meet you back here to show you what they look like when they're done. So these just came out of the oven. So these are fresh and delicious. They ended up cooking for about 17 minutes. I did not leave them in for the full 20 because I think they probably would have gotten a little too dark. So this is exactly how I like them. Now we're just gonna let these cool a little bit and then my favorite way to eat them is just to slice them in half the way you'd slice a bagel. And I like to toast them and you can put butter, you can put cream cheese. I've got a little bit extra of this filling like I mentioned. So that'd be really good on there too. But they make great sandwiches too, like a tuna sandwich or a turkey sandwich, something like that would also be really good. So I definitely recommend trying these. They're kind of a little bit of a different thing to make and they're really easy to grab and go. And I know I have a couple kids that are really anxious to try them. 
So I'm going to, so I'm going to sign off now and we are going to have some of these for lunch. All right, guys, I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you again soon. Bye guys. See you next time.